This is the story of water. It is a story of life and death. It is a story of rich and poor. It is a story of beauty, despair, crisis, and hope. In water, all of life's colors are reflected. In its timeless, nurturing grace, water inspires poets, artists, and world leaders alike. World leaders such as UN Secretary General Kofi Annan. I'm someone uh, uh, who loves nature. Uh, one of the things I find most relaxing is to be in, in the woods, to be in the forest, to sit by the river bank and water, wa watch the water flow by. And uh, I've got to the stage when I look at a river and I look at the water, what strikes me is how clean or dirty it is. But when you sit by a river that is clean, that has been protected, that has been respected by the inhabitants, and you see the rivers, uh, the leaves float, float by, it's so clean you see the fish uh, swimming, and all alone by the river with bears singing, you realize how fortunate one is to be able to have that moment to enjoy, uh, uh, to be in nature and enjoy a river which is clean and alive. Carefully collecting, transporting, and storing water. These timeless ideas were routinely put into practice by ancient civilizations around the world. In many places, the careful handling of water seems to have lost its appeal. An alarming development as some 20 nations in Africa and the Middle East are currently facing severe water shortages. The quantity of fresh water in our global well is running dangerously low. A well that is very limited to begin with. From far out in space, Earth looks like a great shining marble. From up here, it's hard to believe that we're approaching a world water crisis. The dominance of the color blue is very misleading. While water covers approximately 70% of the Earth's surface, almost 97.5% of it is salt water. That leaves 2.5% fresh water. Most of which is locked away in glaciers, icebergs and snow. What's left is found in either surface water. Our ponds, lakes and rivers or in aquifers, formations of groundwater sunk deep below our feet. The sum total of all of these available freshwater sources is a little less than 1%. 1% of Earth's water for all of humankind. 1%. With such a limited amount available, it is cause for alarm that even our coastal waters are showing evidence of humans' toxic lifestyles. As water flows from the mountain top to the sea, 
It carries evidence of humankind's collective irresponsibility. Some of this pollution comes from human waste, some from agricultural waste, and some from industrial waste. Together, they are choking our rivers and contaminating our groundwater. Painfully, we are learning that the penalty for polluting our water is severe. Every eight seconds, somewhere in the world, a child dies of a water-related disease. Whether by foot or by machine, the need to transport water is universal. Water transportation systems come in many forms. The construction and maintenance of these systems always involves money. For the poor, this financial burden is especially hard, and some pay as much as 20% of their income to private water vendors. As water comes to us through a pipeline, from a truck, or a subsidized tap, there is a price to pay. The price of water is of special concern to farmers because they use more of it than anyone else. Agriculture uses no less than 70% of our fresh water supply. Our daily food depends on water. With huge agribusiness trying to keep up with the growing demand for food, farmers are beginning to see limits of production capacity. Conservation is one of the keys to the future of water because nations are running low on clean water. Water for drinking, cooking and cleansing. Water for power, water for industry, water for shaping our destiny. The people of the world are facing their biggest challenge ever. A challenge that will be passed on to generations to come the challenge of water. By the year 2020, nearly 50 nations will suffer severe water shortages. By 2030, many cities that have existed for centuries will simply dry up. Six billion people now inhabit the earth by the year 2050, that figure may double. Yet the planet's available water supply will remain the same. And the quality of this supply is deteriorating. Indeed, a plan for water is long overdue. A plan that involves every key player in our global society, from industries to politicians. Real change begins with people. History has proven that individuals do make a difference. What I would say is that individuals should never underestimate their own influence and the role they can play in changing things for the better. I think uh, they should speak up. They should be able to say in their community, stop polluting our rivers, stop wasting water. I can't take this anymore and begin to talk to their neighbors and friends and begin to organize and let the policymakers and the local government, district government, or the uh, national government know that they are concerned. There's lots of material on this out there and they can organize themselves, share the information with their friends and challenge their governments.